Hello, this is Brian Canopy, uh, the team lead of 3Pi Robotics at U of H. Today we're going to be going over the intermediate task. I'm going to be going over the intermediate task pretty quickly, so if you have any questions, we'll, we could talk about it in our next meeting. Okay, let's jump right in. Um, this is the task that asks you to decrease the volume over 5 seconds. Uh, so what I've started out right here uh, is simply just displaying what the code is on the LCD screen. Okay, and then it prints something new on the LCD screen. It's saying, it's saying press any button. Um, and then it's just waiting you for you to press any button um, to do the main part of the code, which is this. Uh, I use the integer in here, uh, 15, because uh, the volume level on the 3pi is 0 through 15, 0 being the lowest, of course. Um, the main part of the code is it prints playing. And then it goes to the second, uh, the, the lower part of the LCD screen and it prints the volume and whatever the volume happens to be at that time, which when it starts out will be 15. Um, and then it's pretty simple from there. You just do this bit of uh, line of code where it says play frequency. This is the hertz. This is the duration of the frequency but this is not going to matter so much because I'm going to have it play a new frequency before this duration runs out and then uh, in which for the first re for the first cycle of the while loop is going to be 15 uh, but then it decreases each time uh, by this so it plays it for 333 milliseconds and then it decreases in by one each cycle and 333 was found just uh, it was just calculated that's how long you could play all 15 notes within I mean all 15 volumes within five seconds um, and then that will just continue until while n is greater than negative one so once it once n will be negative one all 15 volumes would be played and the while loop can close all right. that's it for the volume decrease code now I'm going to show you what this code looks like on the 3pi. Okay, this is the volume decrease code for the 3pi. Okay, so as you see, it just displays what kind of code it is, what the code is. And then just waiting for me to press any button. It started right away. Decreasing the volume over 5 seconds, and I can just do that again. And over and over and over. All right, that's it. Okay, before starting the trim pot task, I would like to show you where the trim pot is on the 3pi. So it's going to be this middle screw on the bottom of the 3pi. So if I can get the focus, do you see that? And if you turn it clockwise, it increases the value on the trim pot, and counterclockwise, it decreases the value. All right, now I'll show you the code for the trim pot task. Alright, this is the code for the trim pot motor adjustment. First I create the variable pot and motor speed. This will be used to to represent the value of the trim pot and this will be for the motor speed. Um, this bit of code is just displaying on the 3pi what code it is. Mm. This part is pretty important so um, to get the trim pot speed you just do this line right here, read trim pot, and I'm making equal. I'm making that equal to the variable pot, and then I have motor speed dependent on pot. I just put motor speed divided by four. I mean, motor speed equals pot divided by four. Um, it, that works out pretty nicely because the trim pot can have a value between zero and a thousand twenty-three. If you divide that by four, like say a thousand twenty-three, you get a number around. Uh, just above 255 and the range of the motor is 0 to 255 um, and this is just because it goes a little over right here that's just to limit it these two lines um, and then it just displays the this pot value that you get and the motor speed value that you also get from the pot pot value and then it keeps displaying that and you can make adjustments to it until you're ready and then you could just press any button and it'll go on 
This piece of code isn't completely necessary. Um, it's basically asking the user whether you, they want it to go forwards or backwards. I basically just doing do that by uh, making motor speed equal to uh, negative motor speed if they want it to go backwards. It's pretty pretty straightforward. But again, not not necessary if you didn't want to do that. This bit is just making sure it goes the same distance each time no matter what the motor speed. Having time uh, dependent on motor speed in a inverse manner. Uh, but that's not necessary. You could just if you'd like you could just do this bit of code for a certain amount of seconds and then have the motor stop so it comes to a stop but yeah this is really the the most important part of the set mo uh, set motors and then motor speed comma motor speed alright that is the trim pot speed adjustment alright this is the trim pot speed adjustment for the 3 pi and right now it's displaying you the value of my trim pot right now and the speed to that value and what you could see I could do is just turn over the 3 pi and I could I usually twist it with my finger because I don't have the right tool but I could twist that and it should adjust accordingly if you guys can see that so it's changing a little as I twist it but I can't get a good grip with it right now when I both have the camera in my hand and the 3 pi in another hand um, but yeah that should change whenever you twist that and uh, as I said earlier left would decrease the value of the trim pot and right would increase the value of the trim pot thus increasing and decreasing the value of the speed um, and then I could just click any button when I'm ready and then it's asking me do I want the Three pi to move forwards or backwards, so I'm just going to tell it to move forwards. Just press the A button; should t just take off. And that was it. All right, that's it for the trim pot speed adjustment. Okay, before I start talking about the line following code, let me just show you where the sensors are in the numbering system. Alright, here's the sensors up at the front of the 3 pi, and they're numbered accordingly. Sensor 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Alright, now let me show you the code. Alright, now I'm going to be showing you the line follower code for the 3 pi. Uh, so first I just start out by uh, defining a few things that will be used later in the code. Uh, C in particular is going to be used for the calibration uh, this sensor array is going to be used um, for the sensors uh, so the 3 pi can follow the line I'll explain more about that later and this uh, threshold value is semi arbitrary used to for the 3 pi to make decisions about the sensor arrays coming in the first very important step of setting up your line follower is initiating the sensors and that's what this line of code is used for um, it initiates your sensors and then sets them from a value from 0 to 2000 2000 being black 0 being white um, but later when you calibrate it it's going to set them from 0 to 1000 1000 being black so I'm not sure why it does that um, so right here I'm just displaying line following on the LCD screen so the user knows what it is. The next step is to calibrate your 3 pi line sensors. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm telling the user that it needs to be calibrated. And that this process is basically using this line of code right here. Uh, and then just having the 3 pi rotate for some period of time to where all the sensors get exposed while being calibrated. Uh, it's not important particularly, mine's just kind of rotating back and forth, but you can do that any which way you want. Okay, and then once you've done calibrating it for, I'd say, about two or three seconds, uh, you could probably move on. Um, and then it's ready to follow the line. It's, it's calibrated, so it sees 
the dark the darkest part of your line as a thousand and the lightest part of the space it's on as zero so it's ready to follow the line and basically a really important line of code is this I've just got this set in a while loop but I guess you could do it any way you want but I feel like this is the most simple way I have it uh, read the line sensors create an array which is from er this earlier array and it just plugs in the values that it's found for all five of its line sensors with the infrared emitters on um, you can have them off uh, but I always have them on because you have to depend on ambient light if they're off and uh, sometimes your lighting is not always that great. So it's inputting the sensor values into the sensor array that I've created earlier and then depending on what those sensor uh, values are it'll make a decision on what it should do from there. So from the from that arbitrary value of threshold that I have uh, showed you earlier was about 500 and from a 0 to 1000 I feel like that's a good number. Um, so, for example, uh, when the when the three pi needs to turn left, uh, the line's going to be a little left of its center. So the sensor to the left center will be over the line, and it will be over the threshold value. Just of this, seeing that sensor one, which is the second sensor from the left, is greater than threshold value, and all the other sensors are below the threshold value meaning that the black line is right underneath that sensor it's going to move slightly to the left meaning that its left motor is going to be slower than its right motor and that's what I have set right here and it this while loop repeats every five milliseconds um, until it's knocked off meaning that all of its sensor values are below this small a very small number of 150 it stops and that could happen by either just missing a corner for some reason or it's hit a dead end and it stops and the code ends okay this is the line following code implemented on the 3 pi. as you can see when you first start it it's saying line follower and just bring it to the track right now it's telling you to calibrate it I don't know if you guys can see that okay so now it's calibrating all of its sensors to the line. Okay, now it's ready to follow the line. So here we go. Okay, and I'll keep going until I either shut it off or I knock it off the track and see if I can do this. Just like that. Alright. That's the line following code for the 3 pi. That's basically it for the line follower and the intermediate task. Um, I know I moved a bit fast perhaps, um, so if you have any questions, we'll talk about it in our next meeting. All right, that's it for now, guys.